How many of you feel like something is happening now that perhaps is very unique, very different from what we've known in the past in our lives? Do you feel like something's about to happen? We have the rare opportunity, my wife and I, to journey throughout this country as well as the rest of the world. And we've found this phenomenon, this common thread that runs in the belief systems of people from the tiniest villages in the mountains of Peru to the small towns along the Nile in Egypt into the monasteries at 15,000 feet in the Himalayan mountains into the neighbors right next door to us in northern New Mexico. Everyone feels that something is different now. Something big is about to happen. There are differences in terms of how they interpret that sense. For some of them, it's just this low-level anxiety. They feel like something is churning deep within, ancient memories coming forth. Many people feel that the lives they've created for themselves, meticulously, the educational parameters, their vocations, their friends and support systems no longer make sense, and they're struggling to understand what that's all about. And for others, what they've found is something has awakened from deep within them. And in that awakening, they have taken on a new world view of themselves and their relationship to one another in this time in history. Well, this is interesting because our own science now has begun to measure and document unprecedented phenomenon, many, many levels that we've never seen in recorded human, and in some cases, even geologic history. Something is happening now, something unique. One of the reasons in the West that it may make little sense to us is because 1,700 years ago, something happened that forever changed the way that we view our relationship to one another and the creative forces of our world. 1,700 years ago, there were tremendous amounts of information taken from our documents, the history of our world, and from that time forward, we have interpreted what it is that we witness in our world, the phenomenon in our natural world and in our interpersonal relationships through the eyes of our direct experience, we lost the context, we lost the framework within which to place these experiences and these situations. As we are coming to the completion of this time in history, this grand cycle of experience, the close of this decade, the close of the century, the shift of the millennium, all this information now is coming back to us and it's becoming much clearer why in the West we have witnessed and viewed with mystery so much of the phenomenon that we're seeing, while the rest of the world, their traditions and their belief systems, they not only allow for the kinds of changes we're seeing in our world, they expect it and they know that it's part of something even greater. I'd like to share with you some of the information as our own science is witnessing unprecedented phenomenon. Things are happening now we've never seen before. They're a mystery to the West because we lost the context. In other traditions, not only do these events make sense, they indicate that there's a timetable unfolding and that this timetable is intact as we are converging on this point in history, the ancients called the shift of the ages. Our own science now, within the last few years, in 1991, I'll share a little story with you. It sounds almost like the plot of a science fiction movie that we saw recently, and maybe this is where these plots come from. In 1991, from the center of our own Milky Way galaxy, through an array of telescopes in Socorro, New Mexico, in northern New Mexico, one evening they picked up a signal coming from space that we'd never heard before. And it was a signal that was coming from the center of our Milky Way galaxy. That signal continues to this day. Researchers, it's a mystery. They say, why is this happening now? The University of Albuquerque is where they first began sharing the information. And what they actually said was that a source of fluctuating radio frequency emissions suddenly appeared near the center of our Milky Way has astronomers baffled. So they're still investigating this today. Why did that happen in 1991? Earth now is being bathed in a radio frequency signal that we've never seen before. What does that mean and why is it happening now? Throughout our solar system, we are witnessing phenomenon 
unprecedented in modern physics and modern astronomy. Things are happening in the outer planets our physics really doesn't account for. For example, our sun is cooling down on the one hand, and on the other hand, the temperatures inside of the outer planets is increasing. If their heat source is the radiant energy from our sun and our sun's cooling, our physics doesn't allow for these planets to heat up while the sun's cooling down. What's happening? Why is that happening now? Our own sun has been the source of a lot of controversy. The tech journals now, if you're following the tech journals, have a tremendous amount of information that has not made it into mainstream publications such as Time Magazine maybe or Look or Newsweek. Amazing phenomenon occurring on our sun. We really began to see some of these phenomenon in 1996. We sent a spacecraft. It was called the Ulysses spacecraft to the sun to document what we believe were the magnetic fields of the sun at that time. It took a few months to get there. In late 1996, what Ulysses said to us, the signals that it sent back, it said that the magnetic fields of the South Pole were almost non-existent. They were barely discernible. And a few months later, Ulysses went to the equator and found that the measurements of magnetics at the equator were the same as they were at the South Pole. In early 97, at the North Pole of the Sun, Ulysses found the same thing. What had happened is that the composite magnetics of the Sun have dropped to such a low level, there really is no North or South Pole on the Sun any longer, and researchers essentially say that the magnetic field of the Sun now is null. We have many small magnetic fields throughout the sun rather than one global north and south in the sun. Why is this happening now? Why aren't we hearing more about it? The solar flares in our sun, we're seeing unprecedented levels of solar flares. And some of this data is so new. I'd like to just update you and share with you some of this information. Beginning in 1989, we began seeing solar flares on the sun that we'd never seen before from the solar max satellite and what was happening was we saw the largest solar flares ever observed the satellite's hard x-ray burst spectrometer recorded 447 hard x-ray flares a rate of about 32 per day we used to see maybe 32 in a 30-day period well there is a parameter called pfu proton flux units. This is a measure of energy coming from the Sun 93 million miles across space to Earth. It's just a measure of that energy. And the proton flux units are being measured on levels of magnitudes greater than anything we've ever seen before. And I'd just like to share some of these with you. Back in 1975-1976, proton flux units were measured at around 12 proton flux units something like that, 12, 20, somewhere in that magnitude. And that was the average for that time. In 1978, something happened, and those numbers increased to between 1,000 and 2,200. 1982, we saw 2,900. In 1989, something happened that sent these scales right off of the charts. We went from 22 and 2,900 proton flux units to over 40,000. And then later in 1993, 43,000 proton flux units. What in the world is going on? In 1998, June and early July, something happened we've never seen before. Two comets struck our sun at the same time. And they began creating solar events at the rate exceeding anything that we'd seen before in terms of the number of flares per day, 40, 45, 50 flares per day. We've never seen that. And it's very interesting as we download this information from the research facilities, they are sharing the information all the way up to May of 1998. It's conspicuously absent for June and July during these solar events. They're still working through the data and then they pick it up again in August. And in August of this year, we're back very close to where we have been in the past. The sun is going through a solar cycle, apparently that lasts 11 years, and we're in the 10th year. That solar cycle will culminate in the year 2000. 
very interesting, along with many of the other phenomena that are converging on this point. The phenomenon that we're witnessing in our outer world, extending far, far beyond the earth now, apparently is part of a cycle that we're witnessing upon and within the earth as well. Increased seismic activity. As an ex-geologist, I'm particularly interested in this. I believed at one time, maybe it was just me, maybe it just seemed like there were more earthquakes than we'd ever seen before. And as the data has come in and it's been charted and analyzed over the years, what we see is that, in fact, the number of seismic events, the earthquakes globally, are increasing on a logarithmic scale, number one. And number two, the severity of the earthquakes also is increasing. We're seeing more seismic events that are measured at greater levels on the Richter scale than we've ever seen before. USGS, United States Geologic Survey, has a hotline that you can actually dial in and receive an update every day of the seismic events for the last 24 hours. They rate them by magnitude, magnitude 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on. On the west coast of the United States, the seismic events are so close together they cannot tell where one stops and the other one starts. It's like there's a continuous rumble underneath the crust of the earth, and they're low-level earthquakes, maybe magnitude 2 and, and 3. This is good. This is good news because it means there's a gradual release that's occurring rather than the quiet times and then a sudden jerk, a sudden shift where we have the damage. We are now witnessing seismic events unprecedented in terms of how deep into the earth the epicenter begins. Worldwide, there was a study, Time Magazine did a study between 1976 and 1996, there were over a half a million people that lost their lives to earthquakes globally. In the United States, we've lost 123 lives during that time. So we've been relatively fortunate, although the seismic activity is increasing. All through the Pacific Northwest, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, new activity is being documented as the glaciers are melting and the, the glacier lakes are, are heating up. Why? What's happening now? Why are these events all occurring at the same time? It's no surprise to anyone that weather patterns are shifting, and I think we all have been a part of those shifting weather patterns, whether we're talking about tornadoes in downtown Miami or massive floods in South America. What we are seeing are unprecedented extremes of heat, of cold, of precipitation, of wind. And I've taken the liberty of compiling some statistics just to put some of this into perspective. August 1998, Life magazine has documented the effects of our most recent El Nino. And although we've heard about it in the news, the numbers are just staggering. Beginning in 1993, we had great floods in the Midwest between the Great Lakes of our country and the Gulf of Mexico. And there was a period of time where the flooding was so severe that from satellite photographs, North America looked very similar to ancient maps of North America in geologic history where there was an inland sea because the flooding of the Missouri and the Mississippi rivers from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf created this very narrow image of what looked like an inland sea. That was before the El Nino's ever began.